So the uh, perceptron network is, is a very simple network. It has uh, only two layers, input layer and output layer. And it uses uh, a step function as the activation function or output function. Okay, so uh, now uh, let's uh, train the perceptron neural network. Uh, perceptron is used for uh, classification learning. And uh, as a reminder, uh, in uh, classification learning, uh, for every input data, uh, it comes with a target value, t. So in this case, for input data x1, uh, it comes with a t1 target value. So s2 uh, has t2, etc. So and then uh, in uh, perceptron network, the output uh, depends on the value of x input and the the weight value of network W. Uh, specifically, uh, the perceptron uses a step function. So each input is multiplied by uh, W weight, and it, if the estimation is positive the output is 1, uh, otherwise minus 1, right? So this output of perceptron depends on the value of input and the W value, right? So uh, the goal of training in a perceptron is to make the output of a perceptron to be equal to the target value T1 here, okay? So that's the goal of training in a perceptron. So actually, that, that is the goal of training in a neural network in general. So uh, down here, the goal of training in a perceptron is to compute a W value, the weight vectors, uh, such that the output of perceptron is equal to the target value of original data for every data. Okay, that's the goal of training in a perceptron uh, network. So, uh, training in neural network or in perceptron is to determine uh, a weight vector W uh, that causes neural net or perceptron to produce the uh, correct output. In perceptron case, it should be plus one or minus one, right? like here, for each of the input data. Okay, so that's the goal of, of training in neural network. Uh, before I move on, uh, I said uh, this one here, uh, the goal of uh, training in, in neural net is to compute W, okay, such that uh, the output of neural net is equal uh, to the target value of original data. So, but Actually, uh, this is uh, this definition of uh, uh, training is not uh, completely perfect. If you uh, train a certain neural net in in such a way, uh, actually the algorithm uh, uh, causes overfitting problems, and this definition actually uh, uh, reduces minimizes training error, right? So uh, if you uh, if your algorithm uh, is trained to minimize training error, uh, you're gonna have uh, overfitting problem. So in a more general case, uh, we actually uh, minimize the error of test data. Okay, but for now uh, we're gonna focus on uh, this definition. Okay, we're gonna use this definition as the definition of training in neural network. But again, in a more general case. Uh, we we uh, you gonna minimize the test error of algorithm, okay? So what kind of uh, uh, method do we have uh, to train the perceptron network? Uh, we have uh, two uh, training method uh, in pe perceptron. Uh, the first one is perceptron uh, training rule. And the second one is delta rule. Uh, actually, the second rule is more uh, popular, and this is actually more important. 
Uh, the reason is the second rule, delta rule, is based on uh, a gradient descent method. And uh, this gradient descent method is, is very, very, very popular and is very widely used in many of machine learning algorithms. So because of that, this delta rule is much more important uh, in uh, training a perceptron, or you can say training a neural net in general. Okay, so uh, here we are gonna cover uh, both uh, uh, training method, but we more we focus more on the delta rule because this is delta rule is using a gradient descent method. Okay, uh, the first uh, training uh, method of a perceptron network is called the perceptron training rule. Uh, perceptron uh, training rule is given as follows. So you begin with uh, a random weight. So if you look at the previous slide, uh, the goal of uh, training a uh, perceptron is to, com to compute a W value, okay? So that uh, the output of a new uh, perceptron is same as the target value of data, right? So the goal of here is again to compute the correct weight values. So in the beginning, uh, because we have no idea what the weight values are, so you begin with random weights. Usually these are uh, very small uh, values. And in next step, you compute the output of a perceptron uh, from uh, training examples. Again, uh, again, this uh, perceptron is for classification learning. That means each input data comes with a target value. So here in this training example, it comes with xi and ti. Okay, xi means input data, and ti means target data, target value, right? So using uh, this uh, training example, you compute the output of a perceptron, okay, which is denoted a, as OI, okay. Then uh, using this formula, okay, using this formula, you update your weight values, okay, using this formula, okay. Well, I'm gonna talk about this a little later here, okay. So you update uh, your, your weight in perceptron network uh, you, by using uh, this formula whenever it misclassifies an example. So if the output of perceptron is the same as the target value, then you do nothing, okay? You don't change anything, okay? But if there is error, okay? The error means the output of network is different from the target value of original data, then you update your weight by using this formula, okay? That's what it says here. And then you repeat this uh, step two, step three. Uh, repeat, you repeat these two processes, process, until the perceptron uh, classifies all training examples correctly. So you repeat these two, two steps until, until the output of perceptron is same as target value. Okay, you repeat this until this output is same as target value. Okay. So that's the uh, basic uh, structure of perceptron training rule. So let's uh, come down here and explain this formula. So when you update this uh, weight, uh, this weight is the current weight value. And this weight value is new weight value, okay? So the current weight value plus uh, this delta wi is new weight value, okay? And delta wi is, this is eta, this is called the learning rate, it is constant, okay? And the eta times ti minus oi. ti is the target value, which is given here, okay? And oi is output of a perceptron, which is given, you can compute here, okay? Uh, times xi, this is input data, which is given here. Okay, so we we know, we know the values of all of this, right? 
So this is defined as delta wi, and this is added to the current w value, and this whole thing becomes new w value. Okay. So by using this formula, you update your uh, weight in perceptron. Okay. Whenever there is error, whenever there is error means if the output is different from a target value. Okay. So that's a perceptron training rule. Rule is very simple. You begin with random weight. You compute output value, okay? And then uh, using this formula, you update your weight whenever there is error here, okay? When there is no error, no error means output is the same as target value, then you don't change any weight. It is clear if you look at this formula. If output is same as target value, this becomes zero. Okay, so delta delta w i is zero. This is zero. So there is no change in uh, w value, right? So anyway, this is a perceptron training rule, and the rule is very simple. Okay, so uh, begin with random weight, compute output value, and using this formula, you keep updating w value. Okay. In the previous slide, uh, delta wi uh, is given uh, as a learning rate eta times t minus o uh, times xi, right? So this uh, learning rate eta is actually it determines how much we're gonna uh, update the value of w, right? So if the learning rate eta is very high, then uh, we're gonna modify the value of w uh, you know, in a big way. Uh, on the other hand, if the learning rate is very small, then uh, the, the value of w is gonna change the, just a little, right? So learning rate determines how much you're gonna update the w value. So it is usually set to very small number like 0.1 or something. So anyway, that is a perceptron training rule. So if you use a perceptron training rule in a perceptron network, that algorithm, okay, perceptron training rule algorithm will converse uh, if the original training data is linearly separable. Uh, linearly separable means the original data can be separated by linear line. Uh, I mentioned this mentioned this issue uh, when I explained the, the end function or function or uh, x or function. Okay, uh, in in a earlier uh, earlier slide, so uh, you can take a look. So if the original training data is linearly separable and the learning rate is efficiently small then the, if you run the perceptron training rule in perceptron network, then the algorithm will is guaranteed to converge. Okay. So that is the property of a perceptron training rule. But what if the original data is not linearly separable? So uh, earlier I mentioned uh, a problem of non-linearly separable. Uh, problem such as uh, XOR uh, data, XOR problem. So in uh, in that case, if the data is not linearly separable, and uh, if you use a perceptron training rule uh, in a perceptron network for non-linearly separable problem, then what happens is this algorithm actually keeps going; it never stops. Okay. So convergence is not uh, guaranteed, it is not assured, and again, it just keeps running, it never stops, okay? So that's the problem of a perceptron training. So you can you, you don't use perceptron training rule for non-linearly separable problem. So problems of a perceptron rule is, uh, as I said, if the uh, original uh, training data is linearly separable,
then you have no problem. Then you run a perception training rule and it finds a successful weight vector. Actually, it finds optimal weight vector. Okay, this, that's good. That's fine. But if the original data is not linearly separable, and if you run perceptron training rule for perceptron network, then uh, this algorithm fails to converge, and actually it just keeps keeps running. Okay, it never stops. Okay, so that is the problem of perceptron perceptron rule. So we studied the detailed uh, procedure of perceptron training rule and also we studied the problem of the uh, perceptron training rule. Uh, if you uh, apply a perceptron training rule in non-linearly separable case, the algorithm never stops. It keeps, uh, keeps running. Okay, that is the problem. So because of that, we have uh, another uh, a training rule called the Delta rule. And, and this is designed to overcome uh, this difficulty I mentioned. Okay, so if the problem is non-linearly separable, the perceptron training rule just keeps, keeps running, okay? Delta rule is also known as ADA line rule. Uh, ADA line means adaptive linear neuron. So this delta rule is much more famous, popular, and actually much more important. Okay, the reason is this delta rule is based on a gradient descent method uh, to search for the possible weight values. So uh, this delta rule is based on gradient descent method, and this gradient descent method is uh, very much widely used in many of machine learning algorithms. Okay, so uh, that's why this uh, delta rule is much more important, much more uh, popular. Okay, in updating, in training a uh, perceptron. So main difference between uh, perceptron training rule and delta rule is the following. So in uh, if the problem is original problem is non-linearly separable, okay, the original problem or original data is not linearly separable, then if you apply delta rule, dr, delta rule, then what happens is this delta rule will find a set of weight that minimize the error, okay? So if you apply delta rule for non-linearly separable case, the algorithm try to minimize the error and stops there. Okay, so it stops somewhere which which minimized which which minimized error. Okay, but on the other hand, if you apply a perceptron training rule for non-linearly separable case, this algorithm keeps oscillating, keeps running. Okay, keeps oscillating means it stays in one state of uh, uh, weight values and move on to another state of uh, the set of weights so it keeps, you know, keeps, keeps moving okay so uh, that's what happens in uh, when you apply uh, PTL in non-linearly separable case so that is the main difference so that's why the delta rule is much more popular okay especially in non-linearly separable case so this delta rule is it provides the basis for a much more important uh, algorithm called the backpropagation algorithm, which we're gonna uh, we, which we're gonna study a little later on. Okay, so th this becomes the basis for this backpropagation algorithm, which also uses gradient descent method. So as I said, this gradient method is is very very famous. Okay, very very important in uh, machine learning techniques. So uh, I'm going to cover uh, just a little bit of gradient descent method, basic concept of gradient descent in this chapter as well. So as I said, uh, this gradient descent method is, is very uh, 
famous one, uh, very uh, popular in uh, many machine learning algorithms. Yeah, actually, many uh, machine learning algorithms are based on gradient descent method. So uh, here, I'm going to introduce uh, just basic of gradient descent method here. Uh, actually, I'm going to have uh, uh, another chapter which uh, is devoted to explaining a gradient descent method in more detail. Okay, but for now, uh, I'm going to explain here the basic of gradient descent method. So in gradient descent method, uh, the first thing you do is you define a loss function or error function. Let's say it's E, W. Okay, so E, e means error, okay, and W means, let's say W is the weight value in a neural net. So you define error. So how do you define error, error function? There are many uh, choices, but there are many cases like mean square error or cross entropy, or there are many, many other uh, uh, loss functions. You can choose one of them, okay, depending on your application. So you define your loss function or error function first. So let's say that is EW. Then again, the goal of learning is you want to find the W values, okay, which minimizes. E, okay, right. So you have error. The E W actually E W error function, which represent which represent the size of error given the value of W. Okay, so E W means the amount of error you're gonna have with these W values, right? So the goal here here is you're gonna find W values which minimize this error function. Okay, that makes sense. The goal of learning is minimizing error. Okay, so the goal here is you want to find W values, values which minimize the error function. Error function represents the size of error. Okay, so that makes sense. So in gradient descent rule, you update W values. Okay, you update W values by using this formula. Okay, so you may not uh, you may not familiar with this formula, but let's take a look. This W is the current W value. This is new W value weight value. Okay, again this eta is learning rate. This is constant, and this E W is error function. Okay, so this is derivative. Okay, derivative of error function. And it is multiplied by eta. So this current W value is subtracted by this one. And this one is learning rate times derivative of error function. Okay. So at this point, you, this may not, not clear to you what this formula means. Okay. But uh, I'm going to explain this in more detail in the next slide by using picture. Okay. So by the way, this uh, eta is learning rate. I told you it is called the learning rate. And usually this is very small number like 0.1 or 0 0.05 or something. Okay. So this picture is an example of running gradient descent. In this example, we assume we have only one parameter w, and this is the error function or loss function of w, e w. And our goal is to find w value which minimizes this error function right here. So the optimal w value should be somewhere around here, which minimizes this error function. So in gradient descent, in the beginning, uh, we initialize W value randomly. So let's say uh, in the beginning, the initial W value is this. Okay. You start from here. Then uh, this is the formula of gradient descent. You compute the slope of error function. So this is the slope of error function at this point. Okay. So in this case, this slope value is negative, right? 
So this is negative, and this is running rate constant, and this is minus. So all together, this is positive, right? Negative, positive, negative. Okay, so all together, this is positive. That means you increase the current W value. Okay, this is current W value. This is new W value. Okay, you increase the current W value. So in this case, you increase the W value. Now it becomes W1. So when you increase this, how you know, how much do you do you update? It depends. It depends on the theta, uh, learning rate eta. If the learning rate is high, you take a big step like this. Okay. If learning rate is small, you're gonna to take a very small step. So anyway, depending on the value of learning rate, you move in this direction. So in this case, W0 now becomes W1. You actually increase the value of W. Okay. By using this formula. If you start here, okay, in this case, again, you, you do this, you compute the slope of this at this point. In this case, slope is positive, right? Slope is positive. So this is positive. Again, this is positive. You have minus here. So all together, this is negative, right? That means you decrease the current W value. So if you start here, you actually decrease the current W value. So you, you start here and you decrease it and you uh, repeat this. So eventually you gradually, it merges to uh, this point. Okay. So if you, uh, if this graph is convex, actually you are guaranteed to reach this optimal point of W. So suppose we have an error function uh, e, e of w. w is the weight values in the network. So we need to compute the slope, slope of the uh, error function uh, surface. So uh, to do that, we uh, take the derivative of error function like this, and it is called the gradient of error function e w. Uh, actually, uh, W, the weight value, consists of many uh, values. It's multi-dimensional. So uh, this uh, gradient actually consists of many uh, partial derivative of error function uh, with respect to uh, each wi. Okay, so it has a, uh, a, a partial derivative of e w with respect to w1 and uh, here, uh, it, this is partial derivative of EW uh, with respect to a WN. So it's a n-dimensional, uh, l-dimensional partial derivative of EW. So e, uh, this uh, gradient is itself is a vector, and uh, again, those components are the partial derivative of error function uh, with respect to each uh, wi. So the uh, final uh, training rule using a gradient descent is as follows. So wi is the current uh, weight value. So uh, this is gradient descent, so we use minus here. So eta is learning rate. And this is the slope value. We take it we compute it uh, by taking the derivative, partial derivative of uh, error function with respect to each W value. So this is the uh, uh, final gradient descent update rule, training rule. Uh, as we have seen uh, both in uh, perceptron training rule and uh, delta rule, uh, this one, the eta, is called a uh, learning rate, and it determines the step size and the gradient descent measured. So, in almost uh, in every gradient descent uh, method, the, we use learning rate. Usually, this is the constant, but uh, as we we're gonna see in uh, in different chapter. Uh, 
and these these days this is not constant anymore but we're going to cover it later in uh, in a separate chapter uh, for now we assume uh, uh, learning rate is a uh, constant usually it's very small small value so in gradient descent we use minus sign because uh, we move we move down you're going uh, downward so we use ne negative sign okay to represent uh, we move the weight vector in in the direction that decreases e it goes down it look we move to the lowest point so okay that's why we use negative sign so this is a uh, uh, the same gradient descent rule uh, in its more component form so the current uh, w value plus delta w i is the new uh, w value and here the delta w i is minus uh, eta uh, times the slope value derivative of error function okay so again this is a uh, gradient descent is put minus here this is learning rate and this is the slope value of the error functions surface Uh, this slide shows the summary of a gradient descent method uh, we have learned so far. So in the beginning, uh, you uh, you assign uh, random values to a uh, weight vector, and then uh, you compute a, a delta w i uh, by using uh, this minus uh, eta times uh, the derivative of error function. Again, this is learning rate. And then uh, by using a delta wi, you update weight value. This is current weight value plus uh, delta wi uh, becomes a new weight value. Okay, so you update this, you repeat this process. Okay, you compute w, uh, delta wi and then uh, you update w value. You repeat this process until uh, when there is no change in the value of wi okay so you that's how the uh, gradient descent algorithm works again you begin with the initial uh, random weight weight values and uh, for each weight you compute wi delta wi okay and by using delta wi you update uh, w values and repeat this Okay, repeat this step to step three until there is no change in, in the values of wi. Okay. Uh, one thing I'm going to add here is uh, if we use a gradient descent method in training a perceptron, that means if you use a delta rule uh, to train a perceptron uh, network, then you are guaranteed okay you are guaranteed to convert to a global optimal answer global optimal weight vector which minimizes the error of network so if you use a gradient descent method in perceptron network you are guaranteed to find the best answer uh, global optimal weight values okay uh, that's guaranteed the reason is if you look at the error surface, you define error function in uh, perceptron, okay? And that error function forms a, a error surface, okay? In the data space, you, it forms an error surface. So in perceptron case, the error surface in perceptron contains only a single uh, global minimum, okay? Because it has only one uh, single uh, global minimum point okay so by using a, a gradient descent which means delta rule you are guaranteed to find the global optimal weight values which minimizes the error of network okay in gradient descent method uh, the, uh, deciding the proper values of learning rate is an important issue. So as you can see uh, here in this picture, so this is the error uh, curve, error function. 
So our goal is to reach this uh, lowest point. So let's say you begin with this point and if your learning rate is too big, then uh, from here, instead of reaching uh, this point, lowest point, you end up here because you move too far, okay? Your step size is too big, so you cannot stop here. You, you overrun here, okay, so you end up here. So from here, you must, uh, you must come here, but instead of uh, reaching here, you end up here. Okay, so you just keep oscillating like this. Okay, that's what's happening with the big uh, learning rate. Uh, the opposite case is the learning rate uh, with small learning rate. So let's say, uh, again, we have an error function. You, again, your goal is to reach this lowest point. Uh, suppose you uh, begin with this point. Then uh, good news is you are guaranteed to uh, reach the lowest point with small learning rate. Okay, in the big learning rate, there is no guarantee. Probably you end up oscillating like this. Okay, so there is no guarantee of reaching reaching the lowest point. Uh, with small learning rate, it is guaranteed to reach the lowest point. Okay, that's good news. But the bad news is. Yeah, it reaches, it ultimately uh, reaches to the lowest point, but it takes too many steps and it takes too much time. Okay, that's the problem of uh, uh, small learning rate. It's too slow. It takes too much time. So you have to decide a uh, learning rate as a value somewhere between these two. Okay, not too big, not too small. Okay, that's the art of deciding uh, a learning rate. Uh, this picture shows the effect of uh, uh, effect of the learning rate. So if the learning rate is too big, very high, it goes like this. Okay, it doesn't learn actually. Okay, and uh, if your uh, learning rate is high enough, okay, high like this. Okay, it reduces error. This is error. Okay, this is number of epoch, number of iteration. So with high learning rate, it reduces error. This is good. But at this point and on, it just stays here. Okay, it cannot reduce error anymore. Okay, that's what's happening. So what's happening here is it keeps, it keeps oscillating, bouncing back and forth, back and forth like this. Okay. That's what's happening here. Okay, so it cannot reduce error anymore. Okay, that's the, what's happening here. Okay, and if the learning learning rate is, is small, low, then it again it reduces error like this gradually, step by step. Okay, but the problem is, yeah, it reduces error. It eventually it, it reduces to its minimum like this. But problem is. This one takes too long, okay? So it goes like this, and uh, suppose the, the minimum error is somewhere here. It takes long, long time, okay, to reach the lowest point. So that's the problem of low, low learning rate. So this is the answer at a good uh, learning rate. It reduces error, okay, and also it reaches to the uh, minimum error somewhere here, okay? And this one, you compare this and this, and this is much faster than uh, this low learning rate, okay? So this one reaches to the minimum error. Also, this is faster than low learning rate. So the, the goal here is you have to choose a proper learning rate, which moves like this. Or well, that's the art of uh, determining, deciding a learning rate. So as I said, if learning rate is too big, this gradient descent actually, uh, you know, oscillate, bouncing back and forth. Okay, it oversteps the minimum value of error surface. So for these reasons, so the, the learning rate should not be too big, should not be too small. Okay, somewhere in between here. So for this reason, we sometimes uh, gradually reduce the value of learning rate as the number of iteration grows. 
So what it means here is, so if the learning rate is too big, it it bouncing back and forth. Okay, it's oscillate. Okay, so if the learning rate is too small, then it it you know it reaches to the lowest, but it but it is too slow, right? So we compromise these two approach. So what happens here is, in the beginning, okay, in the beginning you begin with the big learning rate, okay. So in the beginning, let's say you are here, you move a lot, okay. You 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 have your step size is big. You move you move a lot like this, okay. But as you go on, as you progress your learning rate becomes smaller smaller okay as you as you as you increase the number of epoch okay so that's the basic idea here so in the beginning you move a lot but as you move on near the, the bottom here you move just a little bit okay that's the idea of this one so gradually reduce the value of uh, learning rate as the number of uh, iteration epoch grows okay that's another approach but again, as I said, uh, uh, there is a more advanced method of de uh, determining a learning rate. I'm going to cover this issue in a separate chapter. But for now, uh, you can uh, you have to you have to say uh, learning rate should be uh, somewhere between these two. Okay, this uh, somewhere not too big, not too small. And uh, another advantage, another method is. Uh, begin with the big number and gradually uh, reduce the value of learning rate. Okay. So we have seen the basic concept of a uh, gradient descent method. And in this slide, uh, we're going to see uh, some uh, variants of a gradient descent method. So I put star here. So the detail of uh, this method in this slide. Uh, is going to be covered in a separate chapter, a gradient descent chapter. So in this slide, I'm going to give you just a name of this this method, just to give you a basic idea of how this gradient descent method has been improved. So again, uh, many uh, machine learning methods are based on uh, this gradient descent method or gradient ascent method. Okay depending on you minimize error, error or, or maximizing object function, objective function. So because of this, um, actually many people has been working on uh, improving this uh, gradient uh, descent method. Okay. So uh, there are many directions to improve uh, to this, to improve the gradient descent method. The first direction is uh, to improve a learning rate. Uh, so far, we uh, th the learning rate is assumed to be a, a constant, small constant number, right? But uh, here, the people uh, come up with uh, a new uh, method of uh, improving learning rate, such as ADAM grad, RMS prop, ADA delta, ADAM, etc. Okay, so. Uh, now the learning rate is not a constant anymore. Okay, so it, by using uh, this method, uh, we can uh, use more effective, efficient uh, learning rate. Again, uh, these will be covered in a separate separate chapter. Uh, second direction is we're gonna uh, use different error functions. Okay, so this is error function. And uh, in error function, you can use many options. Okay, so mean square error or cross entropy, or there are many, many, many others. Okay, so uh, people come up with many different uh, uh, error functions to use to choose from. Okay, so that's second direction uh, to improve the basic gradient descent method. The third direction. Uh, of improving a uh, uh, basic gradient descent method is you improve the activation function. So uh, so far we use we, we we use the step function or linear function uh, or later on we use sigmoid function. But uh, people come up with many many other uh, activation functions. Uh, the most pop popular is the LULU, uh, liquid LULU. Uh, there are many others. Okay. So uh, people come up with many different activation functions, okay, not just the linear or uh, step or uh, sigmoid function, etc. Okay. 
uh, the fourth uh, direction of improving uh, this gradient descent method is you add another term here. So this is basic. This is basic a uh, formula of of gradient descent, right? New weight value is old weight value minus learning rate times uh, derivative of error function, right? So here. The first direction here is you change this learning rate to something else. Okay, we have uh, these options. You can use any of these to uh, make this uh, learning rate more effective. That's the first direction. A second direction is in the error function here. You can uh, choose. You can use many other uh, error function, including MSE cross entropy, etc. Okay, so you can use many other error function. And the third direction is activation function. Within the error function, there is it contains activation function, output function. So for the activation function, there are many options like this. Okay, so you can use many other uh, activation function as well. And finally, the fourth direction is you can add another term, alpha, whatever. Okay, that that's fourth direction to improve the gradient descent method. Okay. Uh, the most popular method here is the regularization term. You add regularization term here. Okay. By doing so, uh, you can avoid the overfitting problem. Okay. And uh, you make the, your model much simpler, which, which is kind of, uh, you know, which is kind of make you avoid the overfitting problem. Also, you can add the momentum here. Okay. So you can add some uh, additional term here. Okay, that's fourth dimension here. You can add regularization term, momentum, or NAG term, etc. Okay. Again, you're gonna cover this in a separate chapter. I just give you some uh, name name of technology, name of method here. So that was uh, the gradient descent method. Uh, now get back to the delta rule. Uh, delta rule is the second uh, uh, training rule for a uh, perceptron network. So it, the main difference between uh, uh, delta rule and the perceptron training rule uh, lies in the uh, output function or activation function. So in, uh, it, as you remember, in the perceptron training rule, the output function is a step function. Okay, step function means if the uh, summation of multiplication of, of weight and input is positive, it returns one, otherwise minus one. So that is step function. But in delta rule, uh, instead of step function, this is the output activation function. This is linear function. Okay, so delta rule uses a linear function. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, in delta rule, you can use some other uh, activation function, output function like sigmoid or whatever, hypotangent or whatever. Okay, you can do it. But in this uh, chapter, uh, you want to make uh, this problem simpler. Okay, so uh, we assume uh, we use this uh, uh, linear function as the activation function. Okay, so uh, the reason uh, we the reason why you use linear function instead of step function is the following. So I said the delta rule is based on a gradient descent method, right? If you look at the gradient descent formula, okay, there is a <coughs> gradient of error function, okay? So it has a derivative form of error function. That means error function should be should be differentiable and continuous right let me repeat uh, you want to use gradient descent method okay then the gradient descent method contains a derivative form of error function which means error function should be differentiable and continuous right so in perceptron training rule, 
that error function, it output is step function. Okay, so output is part of activate part of error function, right? Error function contains uh, activation function, output function. So uh, this is step function. Step function is not differentiable. It is not continuous. So if you use step function, you cannot use gradient descent because step function is not differentiable. It's not continuous. Okay. So we need to. You want to use gradient descent method. Then for uh, for error function, you you that error function should be differentiable continuous. Okay. So for that reason, we use linear function like this, okay, as an uh, output function, okay. This becomes part of our uh, error function. So, so that was uh, the gradient descent uh, method, and now get back to the delta rule. So. Uh, Delta rule is the second training rule of for a perceptual network, and uh, the main difference between the delta rule and the perceptron training rule uh, lies in the definition of uh, uh, activation function or output function. In perceptron training rule, uh, we use step function. Okay for uh, activation function or output function, right? In the delta rule, instead of a step function, we use linear function like this, okay? That's the main difference. Then the reason why we use a linear function, okay, for delta rule is the following. I said delta rule is based on gradient descent method, right? And in gradient descent method, if you look at the formula of gradient descent method, it we have the derivative of error function, right? We need a derivative of error function to use gradient descent method, right? So that means error function should be differentiable and continuous. So if if you wanna you if you wanna use a gradient descent method, then the error function you define should be differentiable and continuous. Okay, so that's why. So if you use a step function, this is not differentiable. This is not continuous. Okay. So if your uh, output is like this, then this is a continuous differentiable. It's, you are good. You are fine. Okay. That's why we use uh, this linear function. Uh, for uh, activation function in delta rule, okay? This is continuous differentiable. So delta rule and uh, perceptron training has its similarity and the dissimilarities, okay? So I, uh, this is summary of these issues. So delta rule can be derived for any uh, differentiable output activation function. So in this particular case, in this chapter, we assume the uh, output output function, activation function of delta rule is linear function. But as I said, we can use many other uh, function as the activation function, like you can use sigmoid or hypotangent or whatever. Okay, but in this particular in this chapter, we assume uh, delta rule. We assume uh, the delta rule is using linear function, but it doesn't matter actually. You can use any other uh, fun activation functions, okay? So you can use any uh, differentiable uh, activation uh, function, okay? But in uh, perceptron training rule, it works only for uh, this step function, okay? Threshold output function is a step function. And uh, delta rule uses gradient descent method, okay? And uh, this error because it is a delta rule the output is defined as as follows its output is linear function like this so the error in delta rule is not restricted to having values 0 or 1 or minus 1 okay in the perceptron training rule the error is 0 1 or minus 1 
okay because the output itself is my one or minus one okay so error is restricted to zero one or minus one okay uh, but in uh, a delta rule case it can the error can be anything okay because this output can be any number okay so this uh, size of error can be anything it can it can grow kind of infinitely okay so that's the main difference between these two uh, training rule so this picture shows the difference between uh, perceptron rule and the delta rule so this is a perceptron uh, structure you have input and we have weight values here okay so as i said this is step function so you do a uh, summation of this uh, multiplication first okay and then if summation is, is positive returns one if the summation is negative returns minus one right and use a step function so error is get back to the uh, input stage and update uh, these weight values, right? That's how this perceptron <coughs> rule works. In uh, delta rule or ADA line, uh, on the other hand, uh, these are same. Okay, so we have input of weight and you do summation of this multiplication okay and then uh, you this output is now a linear activation function here the activation function is step function and here we the output is the activation the linear function okay so uh, that's the main difference and then you compute error and the error is get back to uh, here and uh, update weight values okay so that's the main difference between this uh, perceptron uh, training rule and uh, delta rule okay so uh, i said the delta rule uh, uses a gradient descent method and all it uh, i also said that it uses a linear function uh, as an activation function right and now here uh, we're gonna uh, derive the final uh, form of a uh, delta rule in a perceptron network so again we are using gradient descent method so the first step uh, in gradient descent method is to define error function right so you're going to define error function in a neural uh, perceptron network like this so error function okay error of, of w w is again the weight values in network is 1 over 2 the summation of uh, t minus o square t is the true value of true value of data data d and o is the output value of data d okay so this error uh, function is called uh, mean squared error okay this, this is one of the popular uh, error function you can use many other uh, error function okay you have cross entropy or there are many others okay but this in this example uh, we're gonna use uh, mean square error like this okay as an example of delta rule okay so this is the error function we defined it makes sense uh, the error is defined as the uh, summation of square of difference between difference between uh, target value and output value okay so it makes sense so this is the definition of error okay here uh, capital D is the set of uh, training data and the TD is the target value for the training data D the OD is the output of network for the data D okay again OD is the uh, OD uses the, the it, OD is an output function, okay, and it is a function of W, okay. So again, as I said, this is an output of network OD, okay, is is a function of weight val weight values. So when you compute the output value, output of network, uh, it uses. Uh, 
it uses the weight values, okay, and the input values together to compute the uh, output of network, okay. So this uh, output depends on this weight values. And now, with, uh, since we are using a gradient uh, descent method for delta rule, uh, we need the derivative of error function like this, right? So uh, error function was defined in previous slide. So this is definition of error functions. So we need the, the partial, uh, partial derivative of this with respect to wi. So you uh, do this, okay, and uh, finally we have this one, and you now you uh, differentiate this part in, uh, with, with respect to uh, wi. So finally, the derivative of, of error function with respect to wi is as follows, okay? So we now we have the derivative of error function, and uh, in gradient descent, this is the gradient descent uh, formula. So uh, new w value is old w value plus delta wi, and delta wi is this, okay? So this uh, derivative of error function, which is defined here, is, is plugged in here. So finally, it becomes like this, okay? So this is the final uh, the update rule for delta rule, okay, using gradient descent. So new W value is old W value plus this one, okay, this one here is learning rate times summation of target value minus output value times input value, okay. So this is the final formula uh, to update weight values in uh, perceptron training perceptron network by using a delta rule okay uh, in case uh, of using a gradient descent method you update your weight uh, repeatedly until uh, there is no change in uh, weight values so in delta rule again uh, you keep updating your weight values until there is no uh, change in the weight values. So when you uh, update your weight values, one pass through all the weight, okay, is called one epoch of training, okay? So you, you update one set of weight values, okay, that is called one epoch of training. So usually uh, you uh, you update the weight weight values many many times. Okay. So when you run this uh, delta rule or gradient descent, you run the algorithm many many times, like many many epochs. Okay. So usually it's uh, hundreds or thousands of epochs. Okay. So after many uh, epochs, the network uh, finally the network output becomes equal. To the target value of data okay that means the training is done okay the output output of network is identical okay to the target value of data that means training is done okay and we say the training is done and has conversed to a solution okay so and the, if as i said uh, if the problem is linearly separable and then we can use both uh, perceptron training rule and uh, delta rule, okay, both will find uh, a set of weights in a finite number of iterations, okay, that solve the problem. So if the problem is linearly separable, it doesn't matter whether you use a perceptron training rule or a delta rule, okay, both will find a nice optimal answer. But if the problem is not linearly separable, then you have to use delta rule, okay? It will find a set of weights in a finite number of iterations that minimizes error, okay? It's not guaranteed if the answer is global optimal, okay? Uh, but if you use a 
separate training rule for non-linearly separable, then as I said, it, it keeps running as it doesn't stop. It it just keeps oscillating. Okay, so you cannot use PTR for non-linearly separable problem. Uh, in a few slides uh, back, uh, I said if uh, if you use a gradient descent method uh, in a perceptron, then the the surface of error function has only one global minimum po point. Okay, so that way, uh, if you use gradient descent method, then you are guaranteed uh, to find the global optimal answer. That means global uh, lowest uh, point of uh, error surface the surface of error function okay that's what i said in a few slides uh, back so here uh, i'm going to explain why if you use gradient descent method in a perceptron then uh, the, the the shape of error function ha has only one uh, global minimum point uh, and that way uh, the gradient descent method is guaranteed to find the the lowest global optimal point, global lowest point, okay. So this is the error function uh, we have assumed, okay. You can use any other error function, okay. It doesn't matter. So error is a uh, true value, target value minus output of a perceptron network. So for this output, we use the linear function, right? So if you look carefully, this is constant and this is linear function. So then the whole thing is, this whole thing is quadratic function, okay? So if you remember in high school uh, calculus, quadratic function has only one uh, peak or valley, right? So it's very, it's very clear, very simple. So error function is quadratic function. That means it has only one uh, valley or peak, right? That's why this error function has only one single global minimum value. Okay, so that way it has only one single global minimum value because this function is quadratic function. Okay, that's why if we use a gradient descent method, it is guaranteed to find the lowest point because it has only one global minimum point. Okay. I'm going to explain this in the next slide using a picture, uh, okay? But that's the basic uh, idea here, okay? Because this error function is quadratic function, that means it has only one uh, uh, valley, okay? So that's the reason. Uh, actually, if the error function is a convex function, we don't cover it here, okay? So it's a little more advanced thing. Uh, if error function is convex function, and if you use gradient descent method, then again, you are guaranteed to find the global optimal answer, okay? So that's another advantage of a gradient descent method. So this uh, picture shows the, the shape of error function def defined in a previous slide. So in pre previous slide, uh, I said the error function is actually a quadratic function, okay, in a, in a multi-dimensional case, right? So in this case, we have two variables, w0, w1, okay, and this is the, the shape of error function uh, defined in the previous slide, okay? So here, w0, w1 is the possible values of weight, and this vertical axis means the error, size of error, okay? So again, as I said, uh, the error function we defined is quadratic function. So this is quadratic function, okay, in two-dimensional case, okay? So, and uh, if you use a gradient descent method, again, our goal is to reach this point, lowest point here, okay? So our final goal is to find W values, okay? which take us to the lowest point here, okay? But in the beginning, we have no idea where th where these uh, lowest point, point is. So we begin with uh, any uh, random point here, that up here, okay? And then uh, we are using gradient descent. That means from here, you compute the slope of this curve, okay? 
actually you uh, you calculate the derivative of uh, this error function with respect to w0 and w1 so final direction is something like this right by combining these two derivatives something like this so you move from here from here now to here okay and from here you do you repeat same thing you uh, uh, compute the slope of this uh, error surface okay so do you uh, differentiate twice with respect to w0 and w1 so uh, by combining these two you're gonna have some, your direction is going to something like this okay so you keep going like this okay again you have to adjust the learning rate okay so Anyway, you eventually you gonna you move like this, and eventually you are gonna reach the lowest point here. Okay, so at this lowest point, uh, it's corresponding W value W zero and W one is the final answer. Okay, so that's how it works, and that's the shape of error function. And uh, if you look at this uh, this picture, and if you use a gradient descent uh, method, you will you you will see that you have you will get on you are guaranteed to uh, reach the lowest point point here uh, by using gradient descent method okay